Anita was part of my support crew in 2016 when I completed Norseman and I'd also challenged her to compete Norseman on her 50th birthday. We had a very early start out from our place, stopping off en route to pick up Catherine and then onto the ferry from Denmark to Norway. We got over to Christiansand and stayed with Reinhardt and Rosie to do some final swim, bike and run practice. From Christiansand we moved on to Eideford three days before the race, time enough for us to check out the race route do a final shakedown ride, some test swims and some gentle runs. Idea Ford was ready for us. The atmosphere in the town was welcoming as gradually more and more athletes congregated into the town. We attended the race briefing, checked in, had the official photographs taken, had all the race stickers and numbers for Anita and the support crew and car. Soon race morning was upon us all, a super early start in time to get the bike racked in T1 and for Anita to get onto the ferry at 4 a.m. Next will be marvelous. From here on in I want to pass over to Anita and let her tell you the sequence of events that made up her incredible Norseman race. This is Anita's race report in her own words. On the 3rd of August at 5am I started my adventure of Norseman. This is an Ironman distance race, but it is a journey where you start from a fjord and end it on a mountain. You will need your own support car and crew. The entry is a lottery, but as of last year, you can also accumulate X points and then use them to gain an entry. The latter I got from the Swedeman race in 2023. I secured my place in October last year and my training started immediately. We did a race recce in June, in some horrendous weather, and traveled a week before the race to Eidfjord, as Marcus has already explained. On race morning, we had to leave at 2 a.m. I had a quite good sleep even though I had caught a cold a few days earlier. The weather forecast looked pretty good for the day, and it was quite warm and even the water turned out to be warm, 17 degrees. My support crew was my husband Marcus and my Ironman mad friend Katrin, who already has some Ironmans and X triathlons under her belt as support. We got everything set up in T1, and I soon entered the ferry. We were told that we leave 4 a.m. sharp. I had none of the race nerves I experienced last year. I was quite looking forward to the race and a beautiful day. Jumping off the ferry, which was not as high as some had thought. Previously, a lot of people had asked me if I would jump. I hit the water and swum to start line. The kayaks were already waiting for us and when the hooter of the ferry went off and we were on our race. I had put everything on hat, gloves, shoes, but could have done without it. The right hand glove filled with water and I had to squeeze it every third stroke. I had forgotten to put it under the wetsuit arm. The swim felt easy and I kept overtaking people. 
It wasn't as dark as I was expecting. No problem with sighting. When I swam along the pier, I could see Marcus and Katrin already waiting for me and cheering me on. Marcus was waiting for me and we started the striptease in T1. It is quite an art to undress, eat, and get dressed again. Soon I was ready and run out of T1. The bike is 180 kilometers with 3,000 high meters. It is a stunning route, but the climbs are brutal. At one point, we had to cycle through a long car tunnel. They had organized this very well, so that the cars were diverted completely away from us, but I was struggling with the intensity of the altitude gain. At the 20 kilometer point, the support crew was allowed to provide support. I stopped to get my overshoes on as my feet were cold, I always get cold feet, and ate a muesli chocolate bar. I did not feel well on the first climb, I had no energy and my knees hurt. The bar kicked in and Marcus also got me a coffee, in a cycling Biden, further up. Perfect. I got my energy back and the hard anger vita did not seem that hard, with no wind and beautiful views to the glacier. At the halfway point I reached Galo but knew I had already lost too much time to get the black t-shirt. There are three further climbs, and on the last one up to Imingfjell, I was greeted by a triathlon friend and his wife, which boosted me, thanks Arna, over the dam and right into a headwind. I was glad when I finally reached the downhill. 30 kilometers from 1100 to zero, what a feat! I pushed hard into T2, where Marcus and Katrin were waiting for me. In T2, I had a quick change into my running stuff, and then I was off onto the run. Although the bike was a real struggle, I had put it in my mind to run the flat 25 kilometers before reaching Zombie Hill. I soon saw a guy walking in front of me and I overtook him. That was good to have some targets in front of me. I was greeted by two triathlon friends from Christiansand, Vencha, and Morton. Vencha ran with me for a while, and soon I reached the 20-kilometer point. I could not eat or drink anymore, but tried to run and walk. I could see the mountain, Gaustatoppen, and that gave me another boost to move on. Rain started, but it was still warm, and soon we were on Zombie Hill. Marcus walked with me, and I found it very hard. A race official stopped and told us that we can't slow down as the cutoff was at 22.15. Another push and we made it at 22.03. Phew. Then it was another five kilometers up to the junction to the mountain footpath and then turn around. Katrin joined us on the way down and we were walking with our headlamps in the dark. We finally reached the finish line after 19 and a half hours. It was great to see the race crew still all there and cheering everybody on to the last person. We got a hot soup served and had a chat with the race crew. I was absolutely spent, and but glad I finished. This was the hardest race I have ever done, but I can highly recommend it. But once is enough. Physically, I have recovered quite quickly, but mentally I am still numb. It took a lot of mind power to finish, and without Marcus and Katrin, I am not sure if I would have made it. So big thanks to all who came out to cheer me on, and all the ones who followed me and cheered me on from far. I don't think we can all express how proud we are of Anita's achievement, the completion of what has been described as one of the hardest triathlons in the world, a good reason to celebrate with champagne.